What up, what up? What's going on, guys? Your boy Jess. Welcome back to another Madden 25 online rank match. And today, we have ourselves a very interesting game. I am the Packers going up against the Chiefs. And not only are we both using very good teams, but we're both using the same playbook. So that can always be interesting. <laughs> you know, when you see somebody running the same playbook as you, it's like, okay, well, I should be very familiar with this offense considering I run it and vice versa. So, uh, you know, should be interesting. You know, uh, this is kind of cool because if he were to happen to do something very effectively, well, I said that wrong, but if he should do something against me that's very effective, I can kind of, you know, take that and add it to, you know, what I already run. So, you know, I'm looking to see if he runs, you know, the playbook differently from what I do. Because maybe I can learn a thing or two, you know, uh, against him, considering I'm watching, the, you know, the same playbook that I run ran against me. So, um, we already know that the Packers have one of the best offenses in the game. You got Aaron Rodgers, who's absolutely accurate as almighty hell. He is very mobile, you know, uh, not, not a Michael Vick, but mobile enough to be able to, you know, uh, create some havoc with his legs. You know, he's definitely a quarterback that he can run QB wraps and read options with. And he's just somebody who can extend the play and be able to run outside and be able to, uh, you know, give your receivers just a little bit more time to be able to get open. This team is, it's not an easy team to run against. They are very tough to uh, run considering they have so many great linebackers and they all react to the ball so well. But I, I definitely would like to be able to have success running. You know, usually you see the Packers, you expect to go up against a high octane passing offense. Because you got weapons out the yin-yang. You know, like I said, Aaron Rodgers is deadly accurate. And you got Nelson and Finley and Cobb. And there's so many weapons there to be able to utilize. But, you know, if I can run the ball, I will. You know, also, <laughs> Jones. You know, the more success I have on the ground against the team that you're not really expected to run. Well, me anyways. I'm not really expected to have success running the ball on. You know, if I can run the ball well, then it's just going to make the game that much easier. Very first possession, we run the ball extremely well. We score a touchdown. That's exactly how I wanted the very first possession to go. I wanted to be able to run the ball pretty well. I wanted to be able to have success. I wanted to be able to pass the ball only when I need it and be able to just keep the ball on the ground. So uh, right here, he hits me with uh, pistol trips, hits me with a strong power. Uh, right here, he backs up. He's looking right over there towards the right. Ends up finding um, Fasano for a first down. Now, I did have the ball for the entire first quarter. That's just what happens when you run the ball effectively but not get huge chunks. I wasn't getting 15, 20, 25 yards of carry. I was getting more, you know, four here, five here, three here, four here, you know, and just uh, being able to move the ball effectively, positively, and, you know, not big chunks. So that's why I was able to go on ahead and uh, dominate the entire first quarter possession-wise. So time of possession-wise, I have to say. Right here, he ends up running towards the outside, getting a touchdown with Jamal Charles. <coughs> and I've already, I, you know, going into the Chiefs, whenever you analyze the matchup, you got to know who the, the superstars are on the opposing team. You got to pretty much expect, you know, that certain players are going to be able to do certain things. When you see the Chiefs, you got to expect that Jamal Charles is going to be a heavy part of the game plan. And you got to expect that he's, he's going to be able to get loose, break some, uh, some huge runs. You know, I got to try and limit that. You know, if, if I'm going to be able to beat this team, I got to run the ball well, and I got to be able to stop Jamal Charles from being able to have a productive game. So here we go, continuing to run the ball fairly well. You know, uh, Eddie Lacy is a very big, powerful back, somebody that, you know, can fall forward, somebody that can, you know, send right up through the A-gap and feel comfortable that, you know, he's going to hold on to the ball and be able to get me some decent yardage. You know, I would like to be able to hit the outside with him, but again, it's very tough to do so against the Chiefs. You know, they just react to the, the ball so well. You know, right there, I had the first down, but he spun out of a tackle and went backwards, which prevented me from getting the first down, but we do pick it up with a QB sneak. Now, he did waste all of his timeouts. Now, one thing I said by him is that I, I felt like he, you know, called his timeouts, you know, prematurely. You know, I would like to know your guys' opinion in the comment section, um, how you feel like he did his timeouts. Now, I understand calling timeouts right here. We go to Jordy Nelson and holds on to the ball. That right there would have been the last play of the half. If I wouldn't have been able to get that, I would have been able to kick a field goal. And that right there was huge. You know, that right there is exactly how you want to be able to end, you know, the half, considering he gets ball at halftime. That is one thing I consider myself great at. There's, That's the only thing I consider myself great at in this game. Everything else is I'm good to decent, decent to good. 
but uh time control i definitely consider myself great at you know i definitely feel like i do a very good job of being able to you know control the tempo of the game manage the clock effectively you know being whether it be you know making sure he doesn't see the ball again to end the half or making sure i have last possession you know things like that so i'm definitely uh you know good at that and i definitely take pride in you know being able because that right there can change a lot about the game it is way better to kill the entire you know remainder of that quarter because he got ball at halftime it was look at this right here he's going for it on fourth and 32 i have no idea why we get a safety but it's way better you know some people just don't know how to manage clock and and that can be a a, a big factor in the outcome of the game like i said it's way better for me to kick a field goal with no time remaining then for me to score a touchdown and give him a minute remaining because then he can just drive downfield and tie the game up. So that that touchdown was voided out by him, you know, scoring his own touchdown. So, you know, sometimes you just got to try and, and, you know, play into the clock and not worry about, you know, trying to score quickly. You know, like I said, it's way, I mean, what's better, going into halftime up 10-7 or going into halftime 14-14? You know, you, you got to try and, and uh, you know, play smart with your possessions and I feel like we did a great job being able to score on the last play even if we didn't score a touchdown we still would have kicked the field goal and still went into halftime up 10-7 so after that safety right here we're up 16-7 to third quarter's here and then right here he decides to call a timeout and I felt like that right there definitely a premature timeout timeouts are very very uh like okay you need them <laughs> I'm not sure what word I'm trying to use there but you need them they are so important in the second half and for him to waste one i already feel like i already have a huge advantage for him being down one timeout you know uh because having three timeouts is a big difference from having two timeouts especially when you're down you know so that right there could be a factor coming on later on into the game as he just chucks one up you know hoping for the best right there and he actually caught it i was stunned that he actually caught the ball on the tip we tipped it and he caught it as he was on the ground wow absolutely tremendous concentration by Bo to be able to come up with that catch so here he goes moving the ball pretty well you know and this is i believe is only his second possession of the game i want to say you know it's the fourth quarter is here and he only had the ball twice you know so that's being pretty productive holding on to the ball we stopped him from getting a two-point conversion he wanted to make it a seven-point game thankfully we end up stopping that so now it's still a two possession game we're up nine and all we want to do is be able to get in field goal range you know worst case scenario you know we'll, we'll punt if the situation calls for because we're up two possessions you know he's going to need a score plus you know an, another possession in order for him to gain the lead so you know we're, we're perfectly comfortable in the position that we're in so of course i want to keep the ball on the ground run the ball you know just eat some clock up and be able to hopefully at least get myself into field goal range for a scoring drive right there good play by him ran on the outside stopped that read option third and ten the few times that i uh passed the ball he really had trouble stopping the pass, you know, and uh, he did a good job of stopping the run. Well, I would say he did a good job of limiting big runs. You know, I feel like we did a good job on the ground. You know, anytime you run the ball, you get three to five yards. That's definitely, you know, being productive, especially against a great linebacking core like the Chiefs have. Right here again, he's, you know, calling his timeouts. And he has no timeouts. So right here, we decided to go for it, you know, and that right there ends the game. You know, we decided to go for it because if we didn't get it he still needs two possessions in order to come back so it wasn't like we were at risk of losing our lead but the reward was game over if we pick up that first down because i felt like he prematurely just started calling timeouts if he had three timeouts uh i would have kicked him the uh, i would have punted the ball you know but because he didn't first down just you know won the game and what's crazy is that i believe i wasn't really counting how many possessions i believe he only had two possessions you know, I mean, he had the ball after I scored that touchdown in the second quarter right before halftime, but I don't count that as a possession. You know, he only had like one second on the clock and he threw the ball up. But, you know, I don't know how many times he had possession, but look at the time of clock, though. Look at the time of possession between both teams, and that's just, you know, us converting third downs and being productive on the ground, getting positive yards every time. You know, every time we were forced to pass the ball, we came through, picked up a first down, and that continued to allow us to move the ball keep the ball in our hands and be able to you know pretty much play keep away you know you can't win if you don't have the ball so look at time of possession 20 minutes to three we dominated time of possession and our opponent had himself a good record 
And it's just, you know, unfortunate for him that he was unable to stop us on third downs. We converted every third down situation that we needed to. We came through in that fourth down to win the game. And you see, he got himself a good record. He's on a five-game losing skid. You know, it, it sucks to be in those losing streaks. I know. I've been, I'm way too familiar with those losing streaks. But that's the end of the game, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, it's your boy, GS. Love each and every single one of you guys, man. It's your boy, GS. And I'm out. Peace. Give it to me, baby. Yeah. It's the wind.